Short answer, yes, but I'm not that good, so... Okay, I may have lied. Wait, don't click off yet. I know this isn't Pokemon, but hear me out. Abomination is a master collecting roguelite based on the mechanics of a Pokemon Nuzlocke. For those of you unfamiliar with a normal Nuzlocke, they usually go as follows. If a Pokemon faints during a battle, that Pokemon must be boss and can no longer be used for the remainder of the game. You can only catch one Pokemon per route, and all Pokemon caught must be nicknamed. However, Abomination's encounters work slightly differently. They're the Abominations that you fight, and the ones you add to your team, which are usually encountered every other route. And that's... route with air quotes. Thank you. By the way, Abominations you encounter are chosen from the ones you currently have available, but more on that later. And with that, along with a couple of different gameplay mechanics that we'll get into later, we are finally ready to start our journey into the world of Abomination. Welcome to the Island of Abomination. The island is home to powerful creatures known as Abomis. The land was once full of destruction. Over time, the Abomis evolved and have become more peaceful. However, every 100 years, a light spirit and a dark spirit are reborn. And blah blah blah, light versus darkness, blah blah blah, good versus evil, yada yada, Kingdom Hearts, you get the idea. Anyways, the beginning of the game starts with three randomly chosen Abomis who are approached by the light spirit Iodi. Iodi. I'm not fully sure. Anyways, these three are your starters, which gives me the perfect transition to talk about how starter choice works in this game. When choosing your starter each game, you are able to see their type, nature, ability, and base stats. This run, I picked Shrickle, due to his average nature. You chat properly named Pistachio. By the way, follow us on Twitch for a chance to nickname any Pokemon we catch as we plan to do more Pokemon Nuzlocke in the future. Link in the description. And with our starter chosen, title card plays, and we begin our journey. Oh yeah, there was also a tutorial, but that was too much dialogue, so instead I'll just explain the battle mechanics, uh, now. Abomination's battles are pretty similar to Pokemon, turn-based with type advantages and disadvantages. When choosing an attack, you can always check this box on the right to see if the move you want to use will deal extra damage due to typing effectiveness and or staff. I don't think I need to explain much further, since most likely, if you are watching this video, you have probably played or at the very least seen a Pokemon game. All you need to know is that instead of PP, we have mana, and all abominations in your party are the same level as your current level, making grinding much easier. Anyways. Back to the story. We end up in this desert area with this goat dude, who asks whether we are on the dark side or the light side, then proceeds to destroy Iodi. Iodi. Well, hang on a second. Iodi. Iodi? Iodi. Uh, okay. He destroys Iodi's statue so that this dude, who I forgot to mention earlier, couldn't follow us. We thank him and we start our adventure. Uh, again. And finally, we actually start playing the game. So I guess I'll explain how the overworld works. Abomination's overworld is pretty easy to navigate. You have these guys with purple smoke who want you dead and will kill your abomies, and the ones in the grass who can be used for leveling up and have a chance to give you an item if you beat them in battle. None of your abomies will die when you fight these guys, and you can fight them as many times as you want. Because of this, you might think, why would I ever fight the guys in the purple smoke? Well, while you can probably get around some of them, you can't dodge all of them. They also give a lot more experience than the sparring abomies do, and they don't respawn, so you only have to fight them once. So. After a couple of fights, we move on and arrive at our first town. Here, you can rest at a campfire, shop for items, or talk to abomies, some of which just give you tips, and some allow you to play a little mini-game for a chance to gain an item, enhance one of your stats, or allow you to exchange money in order to change your chosen abomies' nature or their ability. Within the town, we once again meet up with Brambush, who tells Ayati to go inside his beard, which gives them the power of MAD. We give our team a name, which, obviously, and pick a symbol for our team which can be a different shape or color depending on the starter you picked. Once we get done talking to Rambush, we rest at the campfire, pay money to raise our party's speed set by one point, and buy some healing items and a speed orb, which we can use to raise one of our Abami's speed stat by one more point. Then, we move on to the next area, where we have our first encounter. It's a Scyscorp, who attacks us out of fear and... Whew, I'm so glad I didn't take either of the other starters. Well, welcome to the team, Jiggy. Dang, that's a nice physical tank. I mean, look at that ability. Though... Those weaknesses might be a problem, but it's fine for now as we fight this Hermlittle, who afterwards gives us a move tablet, which works similar to Gen 8's TMs in the sense that they can be used multiple times, or rather automatically added to the changed moves menu for all the Abomies that can learn that specific move. We then fight a few more battles, find another tablet, and then move on. Not much happened in the next area, so let's just move on and- Oh good, another town! Oh, but this time there's trouble in Forma Puppermint, 
So, I buy a cozy shield at the shop in the hopes of getting pistachios from resistance if worse comes to worse. And I'm ready for battle. And he's dead. Well, that was easy. Hey, we leveled up. Oh. <laughs> I like this. Let me explain. Okay, status effects. I swear that's the last thing I'm going to explain. In fact, I'll make it a little bit easier. Here is every single status effect and what it does on screen. Some of them work differently than they do in Pokemon, so I definitely suggest you take a look at it. I'm about to go a little bit more in depth on them, but if you would like to skip the explanation, you can skip to this point in the video. However, I do suggest that you stick around, as the only way for you to actually figure out what each of these statuses do is for your bummies to be afflicted with them, and there are no other guides for this game on the internet. Believe me, I checked. Are you ready? Okay, good. First off, Abomination adds three new status effects, Dirty, Soak, and Dizzy. Dirty is kind of an accuracy debuff. It has a 25% chance for the afflicted Abomination's attacks to miss. But wait, there's more. It also causes any lightning attacks the Abomination uses to deal 50% of their initial damage. Upon being afflicted with Dirty, Abomination receives a minus one to their speed stat. The effect can be cured when the Abomination is hit with a water attack. When an Abomination is afflicted with Soak, all of the attacks they use cost 1.5 times their normal MP which makes this status move very good for stalling. Important tip, when an Abami runs out of MP, they are still able to use the move you chose, but in return, take recoil damage. When afflicted with Soak, Abamis take double damage from lightning attacks, and fire attacks they use deal half their initial damage. The status clears up after 2-5 to five turns. Instead of being confused, Abamis become dizzied, which has a 50% chance of your Abami using any move from their move pool, instead of using the move you choose. This is the status with the least amount of effects, as the only other effect is a minus one to defense. Dizzy clears after two to five turns. When afflicted with burn, an abomination loses HP equal to 10% of their mats each turn, minus one attack upon affliction, and cures when hit by water. When an abomination is afflicted with shock, they have a 25% chance to not move. Kind of like paralysis. Actually, exactly like paralysis. Water type attacks used deal 50% damage, and cure is if hit by any earth move. When frozen, an Abami has a 25% chance to not move, similar to shock, and a minus one special attack upon affliction. It cures if it's hit by fire. Poison is freaking broken. When afflicted, an Abami loses HP equal to 10% of their mats each turn, minus one special defense upon affliction, and can only be cured by a freaking item. As far as I'm aware, none of the other Abomis you fight have items, meaning that when you inflict anything with this, it is permanent. <sighs> okay, calm down, calm down, good, good. All right, I'm finally done explaining this game. I'm not explaining held items. If you don't know what those are, figure it out yourself. Oh, I'll give you a sample, okay? This is an underdog orb. It is extremely common, and when an Abami holds it, it gives them the ability Guts. Yeah. What the fu- <clears throat> uh, Where was I? Oh, right. So we switch on a move for Poison and continue to our next encounter. I don't know what this thing is. Neither do I, but I know it's got a pretty dang good typing. Welcome to the team, Spikushi. I have a feeling you're gonna come in handy. And we found out I'm gonna increase our special attack. Nice! Unfortunately, Spikushi's nature decreased his special attack, so I guess I'll just use the orb to bring it back up some. Remember in Legends Arceus, where you had to fill out a certain criteria in order to complete a Pokedex entry? Well, imagine if you had to do that in order to evolve. But don't worry, with the fights you can use to grind, it's only slightly annoying. After a couple of fights, we arrive at another town, where we find this lizard guy who's searching for a soul statue. Once he leaves, we raise our party speed by one point which costs all our money so we leave and add this spider thing aka auntie to our team remember that lizard guy from a couple of seconds ago yeah well that's the first boss due to this being a game centered around nuzlocks there are level caps so once we're close to the cap we head back to the town to prepare for the battle ahead of us similar to gyms the bosses in abomination have battles that you can fight before the leader however unlike pokemon these fights are unskippable but you can still heal your team in between battles if need be thankfully these fights weren't too bad since almost all the abomies within the fight will be the same type as the boss, in our case, fire types. So, I formed a plan. I would leave a spy Kushi due to the several resistances and strength. With this plan, nothing could go wrong, right? First fight was pretty easy, with Spikushi pulling out an easy win. Though he did take quite a beating, we came prepared and healed him right before the next battle, which went even better than the last due to the Gotini having a 4x weakness to water. We then went on to the next fight, which had a Gotini followed by a Cycling, 
The ice typing scared me a bit, so I threw out Jiggy, whose earth type attacks were strong against both fire and ice, allowing Jiggy to one shot the cycling, ending the battle. And we switched Baikushi into our first slot again and head into the boss fight. The fight began with Jellipin, who began by dropping our attack and raising theirs by one, which didn't really phase me at all since Baikushi is a special attacker. The Jellipin then succeeded in burning Spikushi just before dying the next turn. Now we face our lizard friend Lymphidian, whose Spikushi counters perfectly due to their lightning typing. I noticed that Lymphidian excels in special attack, so I play it safe by using Puff Out to increase my special defense. Lymphidian then just uses Sprinkle, which heals Spikushi of his burn. Lymphidian then proceeds to use Fire Shock, which inflicts us with burn once more. The burn puts Spikushi down to half health, so I decided to play it safe and use one Ample Apple to heal him up, and then next turn, a Caring Berry to heal the burn. Now that I feel safe, I once again start to push the aggressive, pushing Lymphidian down to 8 HP. Lightning Seal Guy. All right. Uh Yikes. That's scary. No! <laughs> Dang it. I thought he'd be fine. I thought he'd be fine. He was fine. <laughs> and so we beat the boss. But was it really worth it? We lost what was most likely the strongest fighter on our team. No, this type of thing happens all the time in those locks. The only thing we can do now is adapt and prepare for what lies ahead. After the fight, our team rests at a campfire and pays their effects to our fallen brethren. And we move on to the next area, where we get a second grass neutral type. Well, welcome Sunny, and your nature is awful. You see, there's one huge problem with our current team. Air types are very common, and we don't have a counter for that. You see this Fowler? Yeah, this one fight lasted 10 minutes. These fights were destroying our team, and unfortunately there wasn't much we could do about it. We had to sacrifice Sunny in order for us to make it out of this fight alone. But sometimes, sacrifice is unavoidable and necessary in order to come out on top, no matter how much it may hurt. But hey, at least we got a wired type again. Well, everyone say hello to Sush, and oh hey, it's the dad's boss, and we only have one ample apple. Well, the good news is, is that we now have access to better items, so we buy some apples and pears from the shop and prepare for battle. In the first fight, we quickly take out the first two Abamis, leaving just this Catling. That gave us a little bit of trouble, but was eventually knocked down. After the fight, we healed our team as best we could with our limited inventory and continued to the next fight. Sush, once again, effortlessly takes down another water type. But I start to notice a slight problem. Our only counter for plant types is Pistachio, and while he is a decent fast physical attacker, that's really all he has going for him. So he requires frequent healing to stay alive. In other words, we are running out of apples, and we have one more fight before the boss. Now, here's the thing. I know I said that status effects were the last thing I need to explain, but there's actually one more really cool mechanic that needs a tiny bit of explanation before we continue, and I'm going to try to do it as quickly as I can. So, you've probably noticed that during battles there are always two other Abamis behind the one currently active in the battle. This is the bench. When an Abami is benched, it is unable to attack any opposing Abamis. However, Abamis can learn certain moves that, while active, allow them to boost the stats of an Abami currently on the bench. It is worth noting, however, that there are some moves that allow the active Abami to attack the opposing Abami's bench. Alright, that's it. That's the game. After the beginning of the next fight, Sush uses the move Massage on Pistachio, which raises the defense and special defense of the chosen benched Abami, allowing for a far tankier bird to be sent out and make quick work of the Hermittle. I then switch out to Auntie, who one-shots this Barb Bubble, and survives on just two health against Otto. We then use our last apple to fully heal Auntie, and proceed to the boss, unsure of what's about to happen. This boss is accompanied by the two starters that we did not choose at the beginning of the run, which is really good since the majority of our team are strong against Earth types. I start the battle with Sush using Tidal Wave, which hits both of the enemy's active and bench Abamis. However, the opposing Wagrunk uses Tremor, which also hits all of my Abamis currently on the field. Although the move didn't do that much damage, I immediately used Massage on Auntie, which halved Tremor's initial damage. Wagrunk then inflicts Dirty onto Sush, lowering her speed, but thanks to her underdog orb, 
raises both of her attack stats. I then attempt to use Uproot, but unfortunately I miss, but I land it in the next two turns, defeating the Walgrum. Once Appetite comes out, I immediately switch to Jiggy and attempt to use Poison, but miss twice, and landed the third time. For the next two turns, I use Jiggy to chip away at its health before switching to Pistachio to finish him off. And now it was time for the boss, who is four times weak to plant and is taken down in two turns by Auntie. However, this victory is short-lived, because not long after we entered the next area, we encountered this koala looking thing that swiftly wiped out our entire team, ending the run. Well, I tried, but unfortunately I lost a bad luck. Our entire team was weak to air, and there was really nothing I could do about it. But I couldn't just let it end there, could I? So. I started up a new run, weary yet full of confidence. Honestly, this next run can be summed up in one sentence. If I had a nickel for every ice plant type I was offered in this run, I would have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's definitely weird that it happened twice. I mean, I guess it's not that bad of a typing, but the second area of this run like this. So yeah. I would define this run as being just okay. Our team was a lot more balanced this time, with decent type coverage, but in the end I still lost, ended the stream, and called it a day. Okay, maybe not like a year exactly. Technically, I started my third run maybe like three months ago after that stream, but I never finished that run, and that was back at the beginning of 2023, and now it's... 2024. So before I continue, subscribe because this video took me way longer than it should have to make and I'm also not fully sure how I'm going to segue out of this segment and if I don't figure it out I'll probably just like hard cut to some sort of like intense narration or something like that. And so, after a close examination of my previous runs, I felt I was finally ready for one final run. Alright, so here's the thing, I was gonna do like this cool little montage where I like play through all the boss fights that we already have gotten through, but um, OBS decided to freeze, uh, and I lost like a uh, one and a half hours of footage. So to update you, we, yep, yeah, we have a full team, and we got our first ever evolution. Which is great, cool, cool, um, unfortunate, but cool, I'll, I'll come back later, once we get to like, partially past all the stuff we've already done, I'll come back and start narrating again, bye, have fun with the montage, here we go, woo, yo, she's huge, So, after the fourth boss is defeated, our team rests at a campfire as normal, but this time, this weird smoke clouds the area. And then suddenly, Fursifum jumps out of the smoke and attempts to attack Iodi, who quickly dodges out of the way, and a battle begins. On the first turn of the battle, Fursifum opens by changing his type. By the way, this guy does this multiple times throughout the battle. I guess you could say it's kinda like fighting Arceus, but on steroids. Since he's now a water type, I switch to honey and bring him down to half health. He then proceeds to add an ice type into himself. That's right, he doesn't change his type, he can also add a second type, but it doesn't really matter since I switched to marble and finish him off. Now, at this point of the video, I feel like you should have a pretty strong understanding of the main gameplay loop of this game. You get a bombies, grind a little bit, and fight the current area's boss. Simple. 
and after beating this fight, nothing crazy really happened in this run. I just kept beating boss after boss, only ever switching up bombings when I felt it was necessary, with little to no deaths. Well, except for this one. Here's the thing, though it may look like I'm cruising through all these battles with ease, I would still like to preface that Abomination is not an easy game. For example, the level caps are so strict. I've had a couple runs where I got completely destroyed just because I was one level below the level cap. So what would happen if you wandered into what you thought would be the final area of this game with only 5 Abomis in your party and 3 levels below the level cap, but instead you walked right into what would be the final boss? We have all the pieces, we beat all your goons, you're going to lose this fight, so just surrender now. Heh, <laughs> you got all the pieces, eh? So what? What are you going to do with them? I know they're important to you, I know that you want them, and we're go you're going to attack us for them. I'm asking you to just take your loss this century. No more Abamis need to be hurt. This is your plan? To ask me to surrender? I know it seems crazy, but we're clearly going to win. I don't want to lose any of my friends in another fight against you, so please call this war off one battle short and just take your loss. Alright, Light Spirit. You can consider me on your team now. Really? Of course, I already was. I mean, this is your team, isn't it? Iodi? Iodi, you failed us. Crystal, guys, no, I'm so sorry things turned out this way. It isn't them talking, Iodi. It's for Sum Fume's powers. I offered you the same deal, Life Spirit, when we first met in the forest. You could be, have surrendered, prevented all this suffering, but now look at this mess you've caused. These souls didn't have to die. I didn't kill them. You did. I know that now. They died fighting for what was right, and now you'll die fighting them. How poetic. S. Accidental Co-op. Finish this for me. I began the battle by having Marvel use Belly Flop, which is double damage on floating abomies, and she do be floating. On top of that, the move is also super effective against Crystal's Earth Typing, and if you add Marvel's same type attack bonus onto that, the move does a total of 5.5 times its initial damage, dealing a total of 108 damage one shot in Crystal. Once Crystal is defeated, Patty runs onto the field and I immediately switch to Honey to counter the Air Type and defeat Patty in a single hit. Now is probably a good time to mention that Honey is an absolute monster during battle. You might even say that she's... An abomination? Uh, okay, I'll stop. After our fallen comrades are defeated, first a few summons, all of this runs bosses. And another battle begins. Kill them, this ends now. Whoa, that's a lot of guys. It sure is, but remain calm. You've got this. Ground Duck is the first one up and I'm not taking any chances, so I immediately switch to Marble and use Big Brawn to raise her attack, allowing me to one-shot the Ground Duck the following turn. Next up is Atzalotter, a Water Lightning type, which scares me a little bit, so after a little bit of thinking, I decide to send out Suzu, since thanks to her plant typing is not weak to lightning and is resistant to water. I then use Cucumber Slice to once again one-shot the enemy. Once Bugsaw comes out, I plan to switch back to Marble, who is a little low on health, so I use one ample apple to heal her and send her out. Oddly enough, the bug saw was the first Abami to not get one shot and actually dealt a good bit of damage to Marble before we took her down. The enemy then sends out Van Moose, who perfectly counters Marble. So I send out Mika, who at the very least has a 4 times resistance to plant types. I use one turn to heal Marble while the enemy brings Mika down to half health. To be safe, I then heal Mika and attack the Van Moose the following turn, bringing him down to 24 health. With Mika on low health, knowing that the Van Moose will attack first, I heal Mika one final time and take out the Van Moose the following turn just barely with 21 HP. Now only two bosses remain. Although Mika could probably fare pretty well against the Volstrike, I decide that since the Volstrike is faster, it's way too much of a risk. So I send out Beatrice, since she is the best thing I have against the Volstrike's plant type. I then use the Nets turn to heal Mika up to full health. Next, the enemy tries to raise their attack but I used Shout to lower it, setting it back to normal. I noticed that in this point in the battle, I was in crit range. However, the enemy's attack still scares me. So I chance it, and attempt to use Shout one more time. Luckily, the enemy doesn't get a crit, and their attack is lowered down to 63. I heal Beatrice again, and then deal a little bit of damage, and feel safe enough to use Mika to finish off the Volstrike. 
Then finally, I switch to Marble and defeat Earthquack in three turns, ending the battle. But it's not over just yet. Beaten with his back against the wall, Versifume kills one final Abami, absorbing their soul and using it to evolve into his awakened form. He then charges up his beam in an attempt to kill Iodi, but my team steps in the way in an attempt to block the attack. However, Iodi does not accept this. It flies up in order to redirect the laser, sacrificing himself in the process. Iodi! Iodi, get up! Oh no! Oh gosh. Iodi. Iodi, it's time to awaken. What? Your awakened form. What's a what? Iodi? Iodi, we light spirits of old grant you the power of wisdom to defeat Fursifumi. Use the energy gifted you from past versions of yourself to rid the island of this tyranny. I'm really sc Do I have to fight him when I, I awaken? Look at me. I'm huge. What makes you think this time will be any different? Last time I didn't have the power of this island. Last time I didn't have accidental co-op beside me. And last time I didn't want to kill you. Oh, shoot. Oh cool, we got a full heal. Big Bram. Big Bram again. Oh gosh, he does so much damage. Let's see, that's 63 damage. 84 damage. Do we... Oh, he has so much health. And we are, uh, three levels below, which is not preferred. And he does all that damage to us but I think what I can do is charging punch and at the very least this guy can take a lot of hits from him Okay, now we gotta switch out. I, I, I don't like that he's Earth Air, because that's kind of like what we're bad at. But I think this is the play. We use Belly Drum here. Oh, he turned into Earth Plant. Then we can do this, actually. That's annoying. But actually, that's good, because we can just do this. Fire Plant. He's dizzied. Actually, good, because I need to heal my team. You take that. You take that. Let's switch out to Suzu. And actually that was a bad choice because now he's he's just neutral plant now. And if he's neutral plant, then actually Beatrice would be better, right? Oh he's no longer dizzy, that sucks. I'm really hoping that we don't run out of ample apples, because otherwise... Okay, well... Die. He's dirtied now, which is kind of huge. Uh, he's dealing a lot of damage, but not nearly as much as he needs to... To kill me. I'm just gonna do this. And... 63 damage again. I don't know how much damage he actually dealt to me. How much damage does he deal? Oh, he missed? He's about to die. We got him! Is that it? Is that it? That's it! We did it! Yeah! And so... 
After several failed runs and a lot of trial and error, I finally brought peace to the land and beat Abomination. I genuinely think that this game is fantastic and definitely recommend that you try it out. You can get the game for $20 on Steam, the eShop, and Xbox Series X. I also need this video to do fairly well, so if you've made it this far, send this video to your favorite Nuzlocker for them to react to. And if there are any Nuzlockers watching this right now, I will be playing this game on Brutal Difficulty live on my Twitch the week after this video is posted. So get the game and see if you can beat me to it. And while you're at it, subscribe and follow me on Twitch. The link is in the description. I'm finally free!